the building materials, materials and resources, uh, using building materials that are environmentally friendly and sustainable, whether it be ceramic tiles that use uh, uh, recycled materials. And one of the good benefits of LEED is manufacturers are changing how they do things because there's a market for these green materials. I mean, all the advertising that you see now, it seems like it's geared towards green and being recycled materials environmentally friendly. So the materials are becoming much more readily available. A few years ago it was diffi more difficult to do a green building because you couldn't find the materials. Lots of ways to insulate with uh, recycled materials, whether it be like it's shown here, which is recycled cellulose. They have a blue jean material now that's actually uh, re recycled blue jeans for um, insulation. Whether it be ceiling tiles or carpet or fabrics, they're making uh, uh, lots and lots of materials that, you know, five years ago they wouldn't have thought about using recycled materials, that, but now it's becoming commonplace, not only for the recycled content, but making sure that the content uh, is low in VOCs, which is, you chemistry majors, what's a VOC? You know what a VOC is? It's a volatile organic compound which you don't want to breathe, at least not much of it. Another way you get a point <clears throat> is to get your materials from local <laughs> sources, not only uh, shipped from local sources, but made local sources, so they'll give you a point for being within a 500 radius, mile, mile radius from where you're building your building. And that can be either the manufacturing of it or the distributor of it. using materials out of renewable materials, whether it be the two examples like here, which is uh, using uh, wheat board uh, for your caseworks. You can make wood out of wheat and you can make floors out of cork, both renewable materials so that you don't have to actually destroy something to get your material. A big one that's come in, uh, it's been uh, much easier here of late to obtain is FSC certified wood. It's wood that comes from forests that are managed, forests that were grown specifically for producing wood for uh, construction. So instead of what it used to mainly always be was a clear cut, uh, examples here, it's in managed forests now where they can go in, they don't cut everything down, they do select cutting or they go into forests, again, that were planted specifically for wood harvesting. And here in Roanoke, it's only been the last couple of years that we've been able to find sources for FFC lumber, and it's been more difficult to find materials that were built out of FFC wood, whether it be a wood door or casework, but it's fairly easy now. An example of a door that's FFC certified that came from a managed forest. And even things like uh, what it's like to be in the building, acoustical performance for schools, they have a, a requirement in there that uh, you have good acoustic performance from classroom to classroom, that you don't have carryover noise from one classroom to another, that you, if you have a speaking room that is actually designed for speaking, uh, and that you don't have a lot of background noise from HVAC equipment and that sort of thing. Um, so it's. Lead is also the environment that you have in the in the room. Some examples of that. This is back again over at Roanoke Academy, the school that we did for Roanoke City, that shows acoustical performance. Uh, these panels on the wall are designed specifically to reduce acoustics. Uh, breaking up the ceiling also does that. This also provides daylighting into the inside of the building. Another example of acoustical. Performance. This is the school in Bedford County with the um, acoustical panels and the daylighting. A number of things for the indoor environmental quality that you uh, have options to do. Um, monitor the carbon dioxide. One of the things that we have to do as an HVAC designer is in a room like this, we have to design the outdoor air that comes into this space based on how many people will fit in this room. So uh, you have to bring a lot of outdoor air in because this is an assembly type room. 
So we may have 30% outdoor air that comes through your, your supply air supplying this room because of the number of people. Designers got to design for the worst case situation. So that 30% outdoor air has got to come in all the time unless some sort of system's put in to prohibit. So you can put in a CO2 sensor in this room and if there's nobody in the room, then that CO2 sensor can close a damper and close that outdoor air from coming into the room so that you're not trying to air condition really hot or really cold air. Uh, and low emitting materials, the low VOCs, so anything that you put into a room during new construction uh, that's a finished material usually has VOCs, whether it be the carpet on the floor, uh, the, uh, if you have wallpaper uh, on, the, on the wall, paint on the wall, if it's a wood floor, the finishes on the floor, and all those are contaminants that off gas for a period of time after the building is built, actually for a long time. So again, about five years ago, trying to find a low VOC paint was very difficult, and now it's almost getting the other way around. It's almost difficult to find a paint that's not low VOC. So it's swung the other way. So whether you believe in the lead system or not, it's had a very productive, um, uh, good effect on the manufacturing facilities in the United States in terms of getting materials that are green and healthy. And again, the daylighting and views, operable windows, uh, connecting that outside of inside. Some examples of indoor environmental quality, some simple things that you can do during construction. This is a, a duct. You know, when you finish putting up a section of duct, a lead requires that duct to be covered up uh, at the end so that you don't get pollutants on the inside of the duct. A uh, lead requires a walk-off mat so that you don't bring, bring dirt and grit into the building. Example of the uh, low VOC paint. The Sharon Williams Harmony, that was probably the first paint that was readily available here locally. And carpet example, it's low VOC. Daylighting and views. Um, there's been a lot of research done on how to make sure that that light, once you bring it through the window, continues on into the building and gets in as deep into the building as possible. So they're doing uh, some light shelves which cause the light to come in here and reflect and bounce off the ceiling and get further into the ceiling, into the room. Here's an example of a built light shelf that reflects that light back up and it'll kick that light back into the extremities of the room. Uh, so that helps in, I think, just in productivity of the students, but it also allows you to cut lights off because you don't, there's periods of time where you can either uh, have the lights not on at all or you can, what they, do is call it, call it light harvesting. You can measure the light that's coming in naturally and if it's enough it'll it'll dim back the lights in the room so, so you're achieving a certain foot candle level in the room. During your design try to uh, do windows that'll bring uh, light into the extremities of the of the building. This is an example of bringing light into a, a corridor. You know, generally corridors are the internal part of the building and don't see much natural light. Uh, but if you can do this with a roof form to bring some of that natural light in, that's helpful. This, I brought this school, this is a school we just finished in Montgomery County, uh, Eastern Montgomery Elementary School. It used to be Ellison Elementary School. And it just finished, this, just started this past school year. Uh, it's been very successful for the students and the teachers been successful for us. We've won two awards here lately. One for the School Board Association as the best school in Virginia and we just won one from the school facilities planners. Uh, so the educators like it and the planners like it. And this is an example of the of the hallway and of course the dining room and an exterior shot of the entry. Some other shots of that same school. Unfortunately this is a school where we asked if it, and we um, I don't guess we begged, but we pleaded that it would be LEED certified, and the county said we wanted to use LEED principles, but we don't want to be LEED certified. And the reason they usually don't want to be LEED certified is because of that little bit of extra cost that they're going to have to pay for the soft cost, soft cost meaning planning cost. You have to pay USGBC a little money, you have to pay a uh, LEED certified, LEED accredited professional to do the paperwork. Uh, so there's some minor fees that go along with that that they um, sort of push back on. 
schools as a teaching tool. So one of the things we try to do whenever we have the opportunity is take the normal things that we have in a school and try to use them for teaching opportunities. And it could be lots of different things. Uh, from things at the site, uh, from using a sundial, uh, to using a, a constructed wetland. Um, I know uh, there was a school in Botetourt County, James River High School that my kids went to that used to have one of these and when they built an addition to the school, uh, the bulldozers came out and, and cut the dike, drained it and turned it into a parking lot and I think the uh, the biology students at that school at that time were going to have a heart attack when they saw the little fish going down the uh, the uh, little wet weather stream from the pond. So that's a reverse opportunity there of taking one out. Uh, most sites have to have a detention <laughs> basin of some time, so why not turn it into an education opportunity for a biology class? Um, and again it can be any number of things from building forms to structural systems that are exposed to mechanical systems that are exposed that can be a teaching tool. Here's an example of a sundial that we put over at Roanoke Academy that's behind these students and the teachers teaching them how to use a sundial. One of the things that we try to do, this is at the school I showed you where we had the first geothermal system in. We, this was the old school and then this is addition to the school. We took the opportunity in between the two instead of butting one up against the other not having the opportunity for natural light in the hallway we created this courtyard and created a, uh, a garden for the biology class uh, to come out here and use this as a teaching tool. And that's that same example you showed earlier of using the detention basin that you're going to have to have for your stormwater detention facility to use that also as um, a place for aquatic life and a teaching tool. This is just an example. This is a class, one of the classrooms at Eastern Montgomery that was just finished. Um, and some of the lead things in here would be, of course, all the low, all the low VOC finishes. Um, the um, this is not a geothermal system, but it is a very high efficient heat pump system that's called a water source heat pump system, so it's a very efficient system. Uh, not an extreme amount of glazing in it, but uh, all we could get in this particular school, uh, but the natural light aspect of it, uh, dual switching for the lights so that you can take the lights back. Um, this is the art room at Roanoke Academy, which is an elementary school. Um, that I've always liked this uh, particular photograph just because I think it's a nice art room, uh, particularly for an elementary school. It's got finishes in there that allow you to get messy because the floor is concrete, but the floor still looks good. Uh, it's a stained concrete. It gives them a place to demonstrate their art. Uh, from They can hang it from this rack from the ceiling. Now for some of the lead certified projects, this particular one, State and City Building downtown, was the first one in southwest Virginia that we know of that was LEED certified and this is probably about four years old so that shows you how recent it is. Um, this uh, project was a renovation of a building that used to be an office building and turned it into high-end condominiums. Uh, the, this, two, this floor right here stayed retail this floor stayed office and the rest of it, each floor is a, a condominium. And it became LEED certified only. And some of the things that they did were super insulate the building. They came in the inside, actually built extra, uh, another wall on the inside so they could insulate the entire envelope of the building. They came in on the old windows and put storm windows on the inside of the old windows so that you could get double glazing. They used a water source heat pump that had efficiency, if you're familiar with SEER values on heat pumps. A normal heat pump will give you somewhere a SEER value of like 12 to 15. Uh, the SEER value on these heat pumps were like 29, so it was about twice as efficient as a normal heat pump. And again, all the low VOC finishes. One that we finished about two years ago was a new visitor center on the Shenandoah, in Shenandoah State Park up on the Skyline Drive uh, that uh, was one of the first ones where the state had mandated that all state projects be LEED Silver. 
So this is a visitor center that's LEED certified silver. One that we're probably most proud of is one we did for Blacksburg. It was called Doc Roberts at first, Doc Roberts Tire Company. That's because that's what it was before Blacksburg bought the building. This is on Main Street, South Main Street, right beside City Hall, right off the Tech campus. This was started as a uh, motor company, sold General Motors cars uh, back in the 30s. And the town was trying to decide uh, whether to build a new facility or purchase this and renovate it for offices. And luckily they decided to purchase this and use this as an example of what you can do with an old building. So there's very few buildings that are also um, historic preservation projects coupled with LEED certification because some of the requirements kind of go against historic preservation. So you got to meld the two and this is an example that we successfully did that and also created a LEED Platinum project. So this is uh, the best LEED project that you can get and they decided to do everything they possibly could to get every point that they possibly could. Um, and so it saved an old building from destruction. It now houses their engineering and planning departments for the town of Blacksburg. This is some interior shots. So historic preservation, you try to save the old. So the old metal ceiling uh, was salvaged and, and kept. The terrazzo floors were polished and kept. Um, and the old radiators were kept. They're not used anymore. Uh, windows replaced with double glazed uh, windows and the old arches that were here all along. And before this building was renovated uh, and I went in here, the, they had cars in here uh, jacked up changing tires on that terrazzo. So you, it shows you can sh pretty well turn an old material around if you want to. Another interior shot of that. One of the things, again, that we did to save a lot of energy on this building was we used a geothermal system. The geothermal <coughs> system is actually underneath this parking lot. Uh, so it doesn't, if you try to find something mechanically outside on this building, you can't because it's all underground. So a very highly efficient system. Another one we completed about a year and a half ago for Roanoke County was their new fleet services building out on Highlands Road that services all the all the trucks for the county, all the vehicles for the county. Uh, this is LEED certified silver. And one of the things we were able to do here to save a lot of energy is we decided to use the waste oil from changing the oil and heat the building with the waste oil. So we have a waste oil boiler that produces the heat for the building. And that heat is, goes through a series of tubes underneath the floor. So the heating system's underneath the floor uh, so the heat comes from the floor up on a very high building like this. That's a very efficient way to do it. It's a very comfortable way to do it because it heats you from your feet up. Uh, Northside High School was one we finished about two years ago. Um, again, a school that we were asked to do using LEED principles but not to be LEED certified. Anybody go to Northside? Were you there during the construction? Yeah. Were you there when it was finished? You like it? Good. You know where that is? Cafeteria. Our architect on that calls that the train wreck, the lights. Another one, first one we did that was coupled historic preservation with LEED was this building. This is on the campus of Guilford College in Greensboro. This was the oldest building on campus, built in 1886. And this is a LEED Silver project. Um, the inside used to be carpet on the floor, acoustical ceilings on the ceiling. All these window transoms were covered up because the acoustical ceiling was down below them. Uh, and cheap wood paneling on the, on the wall. And the doors had been replaced with flush panel doors. So we basically peeled back all the layers and went back to what it used to be and brought back the period doors, brought the transoms back in, used um, these light fixtures, have lamps that are called T5 lamps. Uh, fluorescent, these fluorescent lamps, a couple years ago, they were all basically T12, which is a, 
T12 means it's an inch and a half in diameter, and T8 is an inch in diameter. That's what a lot of people go with now that are very efficient. T5 is five eighths in di five eighths inches in diameter, and it's even more efficient than the T8s. Uh, and they're all on sensors to cut them off. Um, corridor upstairs, all low, low VOC finishes. <coughs> and the heating and air conditioning um, is a new system that they've come out with called a variable refrigerant flow. On a heat pump, normally on a heat pump you have an inside unit connected to one outside unit like it is at your house. On a variable refrigerant flow you can take lots of indoor units and connect it to one outside unit and you're using that one outside unit to heat and cool the various spaces <clears throat> so you can if on one side of the building you need cooling the heat rejection from that cooling side can be used for the other side of the building it may be required heating so you're transferring heat from one side of the building to the other again very efficient type of system to use and um, I threw this in there on Guilford College because this, this is a building under, uh, in planning now. We did concepts for it and are trying to raise money for it now. It's a new fitness facility. If you want a marketable, two marketable skills you can have if you get out of college, if you, if you get LEED accredited in college, uh, it's a very good thing to do. It's not that hard to do. If you can, which probably all of you know a lot about, a lot more about computers than I do, but if you can learn how to do computer work to produce this kind of stuff, you're very marketable. Uh, we've got a couple people in our office that can do it. Both of them are young. All the old architects don't know how to do it. Um, so if you can learn those two things, you've got very marketable skills where you can produce images uh, like this. And this is going to be, like I say, a new fitness faci facility for Guilford College and it'll be a LEED Silver Certified Project. This is a project that's, that's almost finished now. It's going to be finished this summer down in Abington. That's the Artisans uh, Center Hartwood project that's on the campus of Highlands Community College in Abington. So it's your counterpart down in, in Abington. And it's going to be a facility for displaying uh, art and crafts uh, for Southwest Virginia artisans. So they'll have displays here. The idea is to direct people to the place where this art is produced, so it's taking it back to the people's studios. It's a state-funded project for tourism. Uh, again, these are all computer-generated graphics, and this is the building under construction, again, almost finished, uh, and again, we lead silver certified. Another project that we're doing right now that just started construction is Center and Square downtown. And there's a lot of things, as you can see, that's going to be going on on the roof. Right now there's nothing on the roof except a mechanical equipment. And you can see we're using a lot of green roofs. We're using a lot of demonstration projects for photovoltaic, uh, wind, wind turbines right here, uh, reuse of water for uh, irrigation on the roof. This element right here is a butterfly pavilion that's going to penetrate the lower floor as part of the science museum. Uh, so we're pretty excited about this project and what it means. It's about a $24 million renovation. Closer view of that butterfly pavilion and some of the uh, green initiatives that we're doing on the roof. Did y'all know that was coming to run up? different style well those are those are more compact uh, as opposed to a turbine um, so they're probably more efficient on a tight spot like that than a, than a turbine a regular propeller type turbine uh, plus they're probably safer I don't know and we probably would have gotten in trouble with the height when we're doing historic preservation which we had a lot of difficulty with historic preservation on this because one of the things that they require is that you, if you're standing across the street on the sidewalk and looking up, you're not supposed to see anything different than what you were before it was um, fooled with. So we had to show that all the stuff on the roof you couldn't see from the ground. So if we had something taller, that would be problematic too. 
This is an inter interior shot of what the inside of center square is going to look like. There's a giant butterfly. I'm not sure where we're going to get the giant butterflies, but <laughs> another view from the roof. And a view looking at Taubman Center from the roof. And our new renovated market building from the roof. And that's it. Thank you.